Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. Five, 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 and I am back with a My Two Cent video for this week, for the week of October 27th to November 2nd, 2024. Um, for the, for, since this, although this video will probably be up on Saturday, I hope you guys had enjoy, enjoyed and had a happy and safe Halloween, whether it's going to a costume party or, or a party in general or trick-or-treating, whatever it was. Hopefully you had a good Halloween and everything like that. And we got five stories to cover, including um, basically an Xbox earning reports that Microsoft um, released, though, which has some very interesting numbers or very interesting things that came out of that. Um, we we also be talking about um, Concord being officially dead and everything like that, though, it, which really should not surprise anybody, though. A surprise week for Nintendo, one of them being that Xenoblade Chronicles X is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch. Um, a response to last week where Microsoft talked about in terms of their multi-platform strategy and everything like that. And the Yakuzuka series on the Switch seems to be, at least according to the developers and Sega, seems to be doing very well and everything like that. Um, and if you're interested in where I got the source of these information, the links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And of course, if there's any part of this video you wish to skip to, timestamps will be either be at the beginning of the video or you could check the description um, of this video at all. Um, but before we get started, I would like to do what I like to call the um, quick my two cents, stories that kind of caught my attention, but I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of details. The first one is, and this one kind of is also somewhat surprising here is Chernobyl Light, the game that was released on the PlayStation, um, and the PS4, and PS5, and the Xbox Series system, is actually going to be coming to <clears throat> excuse me, going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Which I will admit that is kind of a bit surprising to see that game come to like the Switch and everything like that. On the other hand, it might. I mean, you could look at it as a way of remasters and remakes and everything like that, which I'll get to later in this video. But still, I mean. It's another game to add to it, along with Stalker, to, along with the Stalker series coming to the Nintendo Switch um, as well. Speaking of the Stalker series, though, um, the file size for those games have been um, revealed, and at least according to what is being read, though, um, basically um, the it goes this: Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is going to be 7.4 gigabytes. Um, Stalker Clear Sky will be 6.2 gigabytes, and Stalker Call of P-R-I-P-Y-A-T will be 5.5 gigabytes though. Um, in terms of the grand total, it will be 19.1 um, gigabytes and it will be $20 um, here in the US. It might be different in other regions though. Um, no word at this time about a physical version, at least as far as we are aware of um, just yet though. I mean, it is possible that um, we might, limited run games might do a physical version so it may or may not happen, so time will ultimately tell on that, though. But that's the file size for those who are thinking about getting this game for the Nintendo Switch and all. Uh, we also learned that Yeast Memory, Oath um, of Frakti, whatever it's called, sorry if I'm saying the name correctly, though, um, does have a Western release and is looking to come out in early um, 2025. Um, great for Yeast fans and everything like that. I do think the games are fun. I do enjoy um, the action RPG um, and everything like that. Um, we also, supposedly there is some leak um, footage of basically the new Shinobi game from Sega and Lizard Cub. This is probably one of those, you know, remaster or remake of, or a super game or something like that, that Sega has been working on. We've seen them sort of bring back some of their older franchises. We know they're doing that with Jet Set Radio, um, Crazy Taxi, um, and basically, you know, Streets of Rage and all. So. Supposedly, there's some footage out there, but there are claims that they, Sega is taking those footage down or someone's taking it down um, in general, though. So I am curious to see once that game does come out and everything like that. Um, we also learned that Metal Slug Tox Tactics will be launching day one on Xbox Game Pass next week, which is certainly nice for those who are thinking about maybe trying the game out, maybe on Game Pass to see if it's something that clicks with you or not. We also know that it's also going to be a physical version will be handled by um, limited run games, though, which, again, depending on your view, either you're going to either that's good or bad. But for those who are thinking about a physical version, um, limited run is handling that, um, handling the physical version. We also learned that supposedly with a lot of the previews coming out about Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, which is aimed for, I believe, next month, 
There is now a report, at least for those who have an Xbox Series X or S, the game will run at 60 frames per second, which I think that's good. I'm glad to see the game um, running um, at that speed. That is certainly is nice to hear, especially for Series S owners um, like me um, as well. So that certainly is um, good indeed. Um, we are also learning that Stalker 2, um, when that game comes out, that developers are confirming that mod support will be coming to the Xbox Series um, X and S. So that certainly is nice for those who may want to try out any of the mods that might be available for those who want to play um, Stalker 2 and everything like that. I'm very curious to see how the mod support is going to be um, the series um, X and S. I wonder if it's going to be uh, different than what it is on PC. Again, just to be clear, I'm more of a console gamer. I'm not really a PC gamer or anything like that. But still, for those who um, like the idea of mod support for the series X and S, that's something to keep an eye on. Um, we also learned that Nintendo has sort of clarified that there are no layoffs happening at what their subsidiary, subsidiary Mario Club. There was sort of a rumor going around that there were some layoffs very similar to a, sort of a situation we heard with um, Bandai Namco and everything like that. But supposedly Nintendo has come out saying that's not true and everything like that. Um, which if what they're saying is correct, I think that's great. But still... Um, we've been seeing a lot of layoffs um, in, in, in the industry lately, and this year has been really not been so great for a lot of um, developers, especially those who are hand handling Concord, which I will get to a little bit later. And last but not least, in along with the Xenoblade Chronicle X announcement, Nintendo has also announced basically Nintendo Music, which is kind of a Spotify type, their pro or at least their approach to Spotify in a certain way, that is available to download for your smart devices on your iOS, either on Apple or, or Google or anything like that though. Um, it is very interesting. I just, I recently downloaded that onto my, um, my iPhone and everything. Um, it's an interesting idea. I have to dig more into it and try it out. And recently they, they released the soundtrack for the Super Mario Brothers Wonders. There's also a soundtrack for, you know, um, Donkey Kong Country, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Ocarina of Time, Metroid Prime and everything like that. So the list is kind of small for now, but over time, supposedly that list will grow. It is going to be interesting to see how Nintendo approaches it. Are they going to do it, release a list every month, every week? So it's going to be interesting to see how this all, um, excuse me, all plays out and everything like that. And in the movie and TV show part of the Quick Might You Sent, um, we are learning that supposedly a movie based off the Oregon Trail is in development at um, Apple and everything. Um, basically, it's, from what I understand, it might be a different take or take on you know the classic educational game the Oregon Trail I think some of us have played that at one point in our life and all um we'll see how this one works or not I mean it might be good or it might not be um might be bad and everything so we'll have to wait and see once we start seeing like a trailer and all and last but not least supposedly we know that with the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie that will be out this December we know that Keanu Reeves will be voicing um, Shadow the Hedgehog, and according to a report, supposedly Keanu Reeves has done his homework for playing the role uh, or voicing the role for Shadow um, the Hedgehog. I'm um, very curious to see how he um, handles that character and everything like that. And judging from the trailer that was shown or the last trailer I saw for Sonic the Hedgehog 3, I will admit that trailer, I would say it's a little bit darker than say um, some of the past trailers for the Sonic series and every, or for the Sonic movies and everything like that. So I'm very curious to see how this one is going to um, play out and all. I'm looking forward to seeing this movie when it comes out in um, December and all. <clears throat> okay, with the Quick My Chief Scent part now done, along with the movie and TV show part of, of the Quick My Chief Scent, We'll get started, we'll started with our first story, and this one has to do with the Yakuzuka series on the um, Nintendo Switch and everything like that. Um, the Yakuzuka series has certainly been very successful for the developers and the publisher um, Sega, though, and there have been numerous entries um, in the series to even somewhat new takes on it, like the Like a Dragon, I think Yakuzuka Like a Dragon, which aimed for more like the RPG type of approach, and the upcoming new one. I forgot its name, but it seems to be aiming towards something that's like their take on Assassin's Creed 4 um, Black Flag. 
But as far as being on Nintendo system, I would say before Yakuzuka um, Kiwi um, came to the Nintendo Switch, the Yakuzuka series has been almost like non-existent on there. There was one game that was released on the Wii U, but only released in Japan, and I think it was a port of the first and second one. And supposedly that one didn't do as well and all. Some might contribute to the fact that the Wii U was certainly not Nintendo's successful system. I think you could argue that's one contributing factor to the game flopping in Japan and everything when it came out on the Wii U. And then of course there was a comment made by the series creator who eventually left and worked, I think it's currently working at Tencent and all, who sort of made a comment that kind of rubbed Nintendo fans the wrong way and basically he's making something similar to saying how he doesn't believe the series would do well on Nintendo's platform or the Nintendo Switch and everything. Um, fast forward to um, this year and we learned about how the first entry, a remake of Yakuza Kiwi, would be making its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Um, for the West it will be available only digital, but Limited Run Games, at least as a recording of this video, is doing pre-orders for a physical copy and everything um, like that. And so it was going to be interesting to see how well um, the game um, sold and all. And based off the comments made by the developers, assuming what they are saying is correct, it seems that the game had did very well on the Nintendo Switch though. In an article for uh, MyNintendo.com, it quoted a comment made by um, one of the, um, um, the studio uh, director who basically talked about how the Yakuza Kiri for the Nintendo Switch family system is currently selling like hotcakes. He, um, this person went on to say that the exclusive ex executive of the company were predicting the number of units. I missed it by a long shot. I think, I think it looked at it a bit too conservative, conservatively at all. Now, if what they're saying is absolutely correct though, I will say, in a way, this kind of contradicts a statement that they made um, years past, or at least the series creator made, saying how the game is not going to sell, doesn't believe the game will sell well on the Nintendo Switch. And we've heard comments like this before in the past, and we've seen some games make their way in the Switch and actually do much better than what they had originally thought. And some of that might be because of the whole hybrid concept that the Switch is um, known for and everything. But to hear the game, is hear the exec producer or executive producer of this, and again, assuming this is correct and everything like that, does give some encouraging news. Because I do think if this game is selling very well on the Nintendo Switch, I do believe it can open the door to the possibility that other entries can basically make their way over to the Nintendo Switch to the possibility maybe future entries could release day and day with like the other platforms um, down the road. If that happens, it will probably be most likely with the Switch 2 and the Switch successor. So to me, this does give off some encouraging news for um, the series though. Now it remains to be seen if other entries will make their way over to the Nintendo Switch. But I do believe if what the producer or the, this person said is true in terms of the game selling well on the Nintendo Switch, I think odds are we'll see other entries start making their way um, soon. Um, it might be a while until they catch up to like the current version um, right now, but this certainly is um, encouraging news um, indeed. So overall, um, pleased to hear that the game is selling well for the Nintendo Switch. Um, again, if this is true and everything. And hopefully this opens the door to seeing um, other entries start making their way over to, the, over to Nintendo's platform, whether it's for the Switch right now or the Switch successor and all, which I think most like, more than likely it will be for the, um, the Switch successor and all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two. And this one has to do with a... Follow up on a comment made by the Microsoft CEO in regards of Microsoft's um, multi-platform approach and everything like that. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, I want to be talking about Xboxes or Microsoft multi-platform approach. Now, as I mentioned before, their multi-platform approach has been sort of controversial depending on how you look at it. Some of it, some people think this is a good idea. 
Others feel like it would devalue the Xbox console and the Xbox brand itself and everything like that. And last week, there was a rumor that came out that supposedly came from an insider or reliable, so-called reliable insider known for leaking Game Pass and stuff. And so last week, this rumor came from someone by the name of EXTAS1S that, according to this person, claimed that following backlash to Indiana Jones um, and the Great Circle PS5 announcement that Microsoft might slow down future PS5 ports of Xbox first party games and everything like that. It also claimed that there was sort of a red line and that may that may apply to Gears and Halo and, and, that's, and so forth. So that was the rumor um, last week. Well, this week, uh, Microsoft seemed to have somewhat responded to this. While they didn't exactly address the person who leaked this, who put this rumor out, I will say that the way that they respond to it seemed to kind of debunk this rumor, or at the very least, depending on how you want to look at it, though. In an article from The Gamer, um, it reads that, that, quote, in an in an annual letter, the CEO of Microsoft affirmed that Microsoft multi-platform strategy isn't going away anytime soon. In a section dedicated to discussing X Microsoft game wins, including its advance in, in the Xbox um, gaming initiative, um, the CEO had to say this. Finally, we brought four of our fan favorite titles to the Nintendo Switch and Sony platforms for the first time, um, and we continue to extend our content to new players. The article continues to say, naturally, this letter does not expand upon what it means to extend Xbox content, though. It can be referred to that more games will be making their way to other platforms other, uh, over time. As for what those games will be, that's, just, that's where things get um, complicated, though. Um, as it stands, though, um, Call of Duty will still be a multi-platform title for some time. It has already been revealed that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be launching on PS5 um, in the spring of 2025. But outside of that, anyone guess is as good as it get. Um, surely Starfield will make its will make sense at some point, as with something like Zeruna, um Saga Hellblade 2. But only time will tell what what does come. Another noteworthy nudge from, I think, the CEO letter is the fact Microsoft has revealed it has 20 franchises have generated over $1 billion in lifetime revenues of the 20 franchise. He points out only six, which is Candy Crush, Diablo, Halo, World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls, and Gears of War. Um, certainly Call of Duty has to be one of those fr franchises, and Forza's long-standing history could lead to uh, massive revenue. Okay, what is Okay, sorry about that. Um, something happened to my mouse. I don't know what exactly um, happened there. Um, um, it's a, all right. So anyway, it does seem to indicate that um, basically um, it doesn't seem like it seems like Microsoft is ending basically um, their um, multi-platform approach anytime soon. It looks like they are continue, at least based on what the statement that the CEO said. It looks like they're doubling down and continuing on. I do think there is going to be the big question of what happens once we go into the territory of like their first, like the major first party, like Halo, Forza, I mean, Halo, Forza, um, Gears, um, Fable, those kind of franchises, though. It's going to be interesting to see what happens what, once we go into that territory. Is that going to be um, the red line there? Are they going to draw the line and say, no, those games aren't? going to basically be multi-platform or are they going to say yes they will they are going to be multi-platform because if that does happen that's interesting that is very very interesting to see if that does happen and i do wonder if it does what impact this could have at least maybe on the hardware sale of the xbox and everything like that so it does seem to indicate um that microsoft is not abandoning their multi-platform um strategy but I, it does raise the question what happens when it goes starts going into the territory of Halo coming to Halo being multi-platform. So we'll have to wait and see if that does happen or not. So overall, doesn't look like Microsoft is abandoning their multi-platform approach, but I do wonder if there is um, a red line and whether that red line is something like a Halo or a Gears or a Fable or... Um, Forza, um, for that matter, and all. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to our um, part three of our video, and that one will be the surprise announcement that Xenoblade Chronicles X is actually finally coming to the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of my My True Scent video, and for this one, I'm going to be talking about the surprise announcement along with the surprise of Nintendo Music launching but the surprise announcement of Xenoblade Chronicles X actually coming to the um, Nintendo Switch and all. Now um, Xenoblade Chronicles X was released around, I believe almost close or near the launch of you know the um, Wii U and everything like that. Actually I think it was launched in 2015 so Xenoblade Chronicles X, Wii U may have launched in 2012, I'm not 100% sure or anything like that. And the game was definitely one of those games that pretty much stuck and stayed on the Wii U at the time because, you know, being that what the Wii U was, not the success Nintendo has hoped for. But over the years, we started to see the series, the Xenoblade Chronicles series, start making its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a launch title, was one of the launch titles around when the Switch came out. This would follow up with a definitive edition of the first Xenoblade Chronicles game that would make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. And of course, the new entry, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which supposedly was the conclusion of what started with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, also make its way to the Nintendo Switch. But Xenoblade Chronicles X was a game that most many Nintendo fans and Xenoblade Chronicles fans wanted to see come to the Nintendo Switch and all. And there have been past statements made basically um, by Nintendo saying how it would be difficult and everything like that. So there was hope, there were many who feared that the game would not make its way um, for the Nintendo Switch until this week happened. And I believe it happened around on a Tuesday when Nintendo out of nowhere dropped the trailer and an announcement that they were porting Xenoblade Chronicles X to the um, Nintendo Switch and everything like that. Um, from an article from Nintendo Life, it reads that Nintendo has um, announced that Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition will be um, launching um, will be launching on the Nintendo Switch on March 20th, um, 2025, boasting updated visuals and additional content. The release will mark the final port of re-releases for the Xenoblade Chronicle franchise on Switch, meaning the entire series will now be playable on one console. The original launched in Wii, on Wii U in 2015 and well regarded among the fans as the strongest spin-off of the um, mainline series. So to see this finally coming to the Nintendo Switch does make me happy because it was definitely one of the games I really would have liked would have liked to have seen come to the Nintendo Switch and to finally hear it finally coming to the Nintendo Switch is certainly good news indeed. Um, judging by what was shown in the trailer, it does look like there is some visual um, differences though, maybe not as much as what we saw when we went from the original Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii U and then, you know, the 3DS version to the Nintendo Switch and all, but it does look like they did clean up some of the visuals and everything like that. But I am very curious about a couple things, including the additional content, which has been reported to be maybe clean up some stuff that where the end of Xenoblade Chronicle X left on a cliffhanger to basically some of the um, combat and, and gameplay mechanics, um, to be exact, though, includes considering that the original Xenoblade Chronicles X was built around the Wii U gamepad and all. So I'm very curious to see what they do, um, what they might change, and what might be different um, this time around. And I am also very curious about if if there's going to be any changes to the combat. Because when Xenoblade Chronicles X came out, the combat, I would say, followed closely to what the original Xenoblade Chronicles was on the um, Wii U, I mean, on the Wii um the 3DS and of course, you know, the definitive edition of Xenoblade Chronicles did follow what was basically based off of that and everything like that, compared to what Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 were. So I'm curious to see, have they changed the combat in any way or is it going to be just like it was in 2015 or if there's an option where you could choose which of the combats you, combat approach you wish to use. So. That certainly is um, very, there's still some questions about that. I'm also very curious about maybe the frame rate, um, what kind of frame rate it will be running on though. 
I'm assuming it's gonna be 30 frames per second, but we don't, I don't know 100% for certain. I'm also hoping to see what kind of resolution it would be though, because I mean, we know Xenoblade Chronicles 2 resolution when in portable mode wasn't exactly that great. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, better than Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but still not that great. And then finally, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, <coughs> excuse me, his resolution was probably um, the best looking one, even in portable mode and all. So I'm very curious to see how this one is going to um, turn out at all. Plus, on top of that, I am kind of curious to see if this game will do well, because if it does, I do wonder if they will continue with maybe a Xenoblade Chronicles X2 or something like that. So it is certainly going to be interesting to see what happens when this game um, does come out, though. And finally, to conclude, though, um, I think with this announcement, it kind of, I, I think two things came out of this. At least this is how I'm seeing it. Number one, it does kind of reinforce the rumor that we've been hearing um, lately about how Nintendo seems to be focusing on remasters and everything to buy time until the Nintendo Switch 2 or Switch successor comes out. And two, I do think this could be an indication that we probably are not going to hear an announcement for the Switch 2 or all, at all this year. Now, I could be wrong. Um, we could hear an announcement between in November or December, so it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I'm leaning towards it's unlikely we'll hear an announcement for the um, Switch 2 um, this year, though. I think this might have been the big announcement for Nintendo and everything like that. So at least that's how I'm leaning towards this with this announcement of Xenoblade Chronicles X. But in either case, though, I think it's not, finally it's nice that we hear that this game's coming to the Nintendo Switch. I'm definitely looking forward to this one when it comes out on um, March um, 20th, 2025. So overall, a very surprise announcement for, from Nintendo, and I'm sure Nintendo fans and Xenoblade Chronicles fans are pretty happy um, with this announcement and everything. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, we'll get to part four. And this one has to do with, unfortunately, the sad news that um, Concord is officially dead and the developer Firewalk Studios is um, closed, that Sony has officially closed them, closed them down or shut them down and all. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of my My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be talking about, unfortunately, um, Concord's fate, though. Now, sadly enough, the game Concord didn't really get the um, best reception um, ever. And there are, you could point to many factors. One of it is an oversaturated market of live service type of game, as we've seen. So many developers try to jump on board the live surface gate gravy train, you know, with monetization and everything like that. But we've also seen several failures of those attempts and everything like that. We've seen some games that just have disappeared off the radar, like Foam Stars is a very good um, example of that. So to Battle on Fall, that failed um, miserably and everything like that. And unfortunately, Concord was is certainly one of those titles. Now... When it launched though, it didn't get the best response from a lot of folks and it basically um, bombed big time, even worse than say, I think Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, which right now it's still there, but the question is how long will that game stay online? Much like same view I had with Marvel's Avengers. I mean, at one point, at, at a certain point, they Square Enix just decided to cut their losses and just pull the plug on that live service um, game and everything. And so when it was clear the game was not going to do well, they pulled the game from the storefronts and everything like that to reevaluate what exactly they were going to do with it, though. There were many whispers and fears about the possibility that the studio was going to be shut down and everything like that. And unfortunately, this week, that fear um, came to light when it was announced by Sony that they were shutting down this studio, along with another studio that was working on a mobile game that obviously will not see the light of day and everything like that. And in a post from SonyInteractive.com in terms of one of their blogs, um, they pointed out um, to the studios, um, their business um, decision related to two of their studios, Neo Koai and Firewalk Studios. For one of their studios, Neo Koai, 
Um, they mentioned, quote, while mobile remains a priority growth for the studio business, we are in the very early stage of our mobile effort. To achieve success in, in this area, we need to concentrate on titles that are in line with PlayStation Studios predigy and have the potential to reach uh, more um, players globally. With with this refocus approach, Neo um, Koi, KOI will close and its mobile action game will not be moving forward. I want to express my gratitude to, to everyone at the, the studio though for their hard work and endless passion to innovate. Regarding Firewalk, as announced in early um, September, certain aspects of Concord was exceptional, but others did not land with enough players, and as a result, we took the game offline. We have spent considerable time these past few months exploring all our options. After much thought, we had determined the best path forward is to permanently sunset the game and close the studio. I want to thank all of Firework for their craftsman, creative spirit, and dedication. The P PvP first-person shooter genre is competitive space that continues evolving, and unfortunately, we did not hit our targets with this title. We will take the lessons learned from Concord and continue to advance our live service capability to deliver future growth um, in this area. I know none of this is easy news to hear, particularly with colleagues and friends departing SIE. Both decisions were given serious thought, and ultimately, we feel they are the right ones to strengthen the organization. Um, Neo Koai and Firewalks were home to many talented individuals, and we will work to find placement for some of these impacted within our global community of studios where possible. I am a big believer in the benefit of embracing creative experiments and developing new IPs. However, going through substantial finance, finances, especially especially in a challenging economy environment, it's critical. With, with today, it's a difficult day. There's much to look forward in the months ahead of the studio business group and our team. I remain confident that we are building a resilient and capable organization driven by created unforgettable entertainment experience to our players. Thank you for your continued um, support though. This was is an internal me email from Herman Hutz, the, one, the person who bought Firewalk um, Studios and basically was really championing um, this game and everything like that. Um, you know, it, it is really sad to see this happen to the studio and everything like that. And it's possible they maybe they did have passion for this title. They want this game to succeed um, and everything um, like that. But I do think there's a lot of factors that led to this game's failure. And I think one of it is an oversaturation of the hero shooter and the live service type of approach. As I mentioned before, a lot of studios are trying to jump aboard this live service gravy train and everything like that and they're not reaching the success that they have hoped for not to mention there are reports coming out that this game may have cost 400 million to 200 million and what makes it more interesting is that they announced they were pulling this game off of store shelves around the time that astrobot came out and that one did um very well and i just feel like Sony's not going to learn anything from this. I mean, we saw what happened with Suicide Squad killed the Justice League and how that game apparently cost WB a lot of money to the point that basically they acknowledge that Hogwarts Legacy did way better than Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. And yet they're continuing to double down on live service, though. And Honestly, I think Herman Hutz does deserve a lot of the blame for this. He's the one who championed this. He's the one that put this, um, basically purchased this studio and everything like that. So if anything, he deserves a, a lot. He des definitely deserves a lot of the blame. And he deserves also to face the consequences. Maybe a huge pay cut or something like that. Or maybe they need to bring someone else to take his place. But in either case... Um, he definitely deserves a lot of the blame because of what happened here and everything like that. So, yeah, very sad to hear these studio, particularly Firewalk Studio, um, shut down. I hope these folks are able to find jobs in the gaming industry. I hope they'll find a job with another studio or anything like that. But very unfortunate indeed um, what happened. So, overall, while it is unfortunate to see the studio, a Firewalk Studio and um, Concord shut down... It really should not surprise everybody, especially once they pulled, once they took the game off store shelves in September. I think it became very clear um, that the writing was on the wall for the studio, though. Very unfortunate and very um, sad um, indeed. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to our fifth and final part. And this one has to do with um, the Xbox um, earnings report that came out um, um, recently, though, in terms of how Xbox has been doing and everything like that. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fifth and final part of our My Two Cent. And this one, we're going to be talking about um, the Xbox earning reports that had, re or Microsoft's earning report that had came out um, this week and everything like that. Now, a lot of people were kind of curious to see how this earning reports will do, particularly in their gaming division with Xbox, especially now that uh, Microsoft now owns Activision Blizzard. And with Call of Duty Black Ops 6 now out, especially now under Microsoft and everything like that, a lot of people were very curious, especially with Game Pass and whether or not having Black Call of Duty on Game Pass, or at least the way they're approaching it, would either help or hinder basically um, Game Pass in general because we know Microsoft has really been pushing you know Game Pass subscriptions and everything like that, relying on that more than say um, hardware sales and all. Well, recently their earnings report has come up, and depending on how you look at it, though, there may be some bad news at least on the hardware side, but it does seem to be there's a lot of good news coming out from this report now. This one does come from Game World Observer. And before we get to the Microsoft part, it's going to be talking about, I'll start first with the Call of Duty, um, Call of Duty, which has now pointed that Black, Black Ops 6 becomes the biggest release in franchise histories. Um, basically, the key metrics that came out of this was record day one players and new Game Pass drivers. Biggest Call of Duty ever in terms of total number of players an hour played over the three-day opening week. Copies sold on PlayStation and Steam um, increased basically 60% year over year compared to last year's um, Modern Warfare um, 3 and everything. Um, basically, in terms of the... In terms of you know the top franchises and everything like that, Call of Duty is at number two with 500 million copies um, basically sold in terms of the series compared to the Mario games, which has right now is at 879.41 million copies and everything like that. So, but they also pointed out that physical sales of Black Ops 6 in the UK were 10% lower than um, um, Modern Warfare 3, and they and one of the and one of the writers at GameIndustry.Bids points out that this is almost entirely due to a drop in sales on the Xbox, which was inevitable with um, Game Pass and everything. Which So basically, if we're reading this correctly, it does seem to say that um, Black Ops 6 is doing very well despite being on Game Pass. It doesn't seem like it had the negative impact that I think some were fearing could have ha actually happened. And if... What they're saying is true that it brings in new Game Pass subscribers. That certainly isn't a bad thing. Although I am kind of curious to see what their next financial earnings would be, especially since you probably won't have a Call of Duty, at least at that financial earnings and all. And it remains to be seen if Microsoft will continue the tradition Activision Blizzard has done, which is release a Call of Duty game every year, or if they decide to take a step back and take a different approach and not release one every year or anything like that. Now, over in terms of Microsoft, in terms of what came out of their financial report, though, um, the takeaway from this one seems to indicate a couple of things. Um, according to its earnings release, Microsoft's gaming revenue grew in 43% year over year and reached $5.26 billion in the first quarter. Activision Blizzard contributed to um, the entire 43% of the growth. Xbox consoles and service revenue surpassed $5 billion, up 61 year over year without without the impact from Activision Blizzard it would have been up just 8% when it comes to um, Activision Blizzard specifically the subsidiary generated 1.69 billion in first quarter revenue excuse me its operating loss reached 440 million in part due to its ongoing post acquisition integration into Microsoft hardware revenue was down 29% to around 525 million due to decreased sales of Xbox console um, during an earnings call, Microsoft CEO noted that the company has set a new record for monthly active user. Game Pass has also set a new first quarter record for total revenue and average revenue um, revenue per subscribers. 
I believe most likely that could have been because of Call of Duty being in there. Um, despite the record-breaking launch of Call of Duty, um, or record launch of Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Microsoft expects its gaming revenue to decline in the high single digits in the second quarter due to low hardware sales. The company also said its Xbox content and Surface revenue will be relatively flat. According to CFO Andy Hood, the main reason is that revenue from Game Pass subscription is recognized over time, not in quarters of purchase. Another thing is that Black Ops 6 requires online connection to play, meaning that even for players who purchase the Tanlo game, revenue recognized will also occur rapidly over time. So, depending on how you look at this, it does seem to be there is some good and bad news out of it. Um, the bad news, obviously, is the hardware is certainly um, down and everything like that. And over the years, it seems that Microsoft has moved away less on relying on just hardware um, alone to pull the system and everything like that. But it is considered by some to be sort of a controversial decision for Microsoft to do that. That said, it does seem everything else seems to be pretty good. Um, the Activision Blizzard um, purchase, though, seems to have had a positive impact, um, to say the least and all. And as I mentioned before, um, Black Ops 6, um, so far, seems to be off to a very good start. And it doesn't seem to have the negative impact that I think a lot of people feared um, for um, Game Pass and everything like that. Now. I don't know how that's going to be over time. It may or may not, so we'll have to wait and see. But it looks like things seem to be okay, at least for now, um, for Microsoft, though. Clearly, the hardware is down, so I am kind of curious to see how this will be viewed going into their next generation of consoles, which there are rumors of them possibly doing a handheld to basically having a main, having a system that would push graphical stuff and everything here and there. So. Time will openly tell to see how that will play out with their next system and everything. But overall, it does seem to be there is definitely more positive than negative. As I said, the hardware part seems to be down, but everything else for now seems to be up. And like I said, it Black Ops 6 it has so far has not have had a negative impact on Game Pass as some had thought it might be and everything. So Obviously, this earning report is certainly good for um, Microsoft and the Xbox um, division, to say the least. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes this um, My Two Cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about the developers' comments on the Yakuza series on the Switch and their claim of it being um, doing very well and all? Do you think this is a sign to indicate that we could see more Yakuza games come to the Nintendo Switch? Or do you think this could be just nothing more than a one-off? What do you thought about Microsoft's recent comments in regards to their multi-platform strategy? Do you think it's wise for them to continue with this approach in terms of the multi-platform strategy? Or do you think it was, or do you still view it as a dumb move? And do you think there may be a red line in terms of what games Microsoft will bring over? And what I'm referring to is like games like Halo, Fable, Gears, Forza, um, and so forth. What are your thoughts about the Nintendo finally announcing um, Xenoblade Chronicles X coming to the Nintendo Switch? Are you pleased with this announcement and everything like that? Are there any improvements you would like to see for the Switch version though? Do you think it was wise for them to bring it to the Nintendo Switch? Or do you think they should have bring it to the Switch successor? And do you believe the rumors about their relying on remasters to buy time until the Switch 2 is out is true? And do you think this basically means that Nintendo is not going to reveal the Nintendo Switch um, this year and all? What are your thoughts about Concor um, shutting down? Are you surprised by this? Or are you not really surprised and thought the writing was on the wall in any way? Do you think Herman Hutz should be blamed for what happened with Concor and Firewalk Studios? And what are your thoughts about the Xbox burning report that recently came out? Were you interested to see the game Call of Duty Black Ops 6 doing very well? Were you curious to see how what impact Call of Duty would have on Game Pass in any way? Um, do you think the hardware being down is a concern in, in any way at all? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, 
Make sure you hit the bell icon for any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through um, PayPal me, Patreon, or Steam Labs. Um, again, links will be in the description of this video, so you can watch this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye.